guys we have a Holden Captiva today uh, the problem with the car is well basically the customers reckon that's just the engine light on uh, that's the problem he's been to a few mechanics two three mechanics and uh, no one seems to sort of give him a proper answer okay uh, according to them it needs a new DPF okay so another classic DPF issues here but um, what customer didn't tell me I did specifically ask him are you losing power or not he said no nah, no nah, I don't feel like I'm losing power but um, sometimes customers cannot tell when their car is losing power um, some customers um, but I did take it for a drive definitely it's lacking power by a huge amount I don't know how they couldn't pick that up but anyway um, that's why we're here for um, you know not everyone knows everything uh, so yeah it's definitely lacking power and I can already tell uh, what might be at fault for this car but I'll just walk you through quickly uh, what we can check and you know what we can come up with and now the reason I said I already think I know what's wrong with it is because I've had this problem multiple times on Captiva and I've done it many many other times um, but uh, I haven't actually physically gone and had a look at the actual problem part I just know that it I know I, I know where the um, problem might be located on this car just by the test driving and how the engine sound and everything okay for that reason let's put the scan tool let's see what fault codes are there definitely there's an engine light on the dash uh, let's go and have a look trouble codes first of all okay we got a mass airflow sense of performance fault brake pedal position sense of performance uh, sorry position pedal position not plausible uh, diesel particulate filter restriction not regenerable regener malfunction um, oof. and also the DPF suit build up okay now I think this one the first one sec third and the fourth one are they are related to the exact same problem the brake pedal position sensor however could be a different problem let me just quickly see if my brake lights are working the tail lights are however working but they do have um, the brake pedal position sensor that feeds the information to the ABS control module sometime engine control module depending on the car the car is not here for this uh, so we're not gonna focus on that brake pedal position sensor but mass airflow sensor DPF and the DPF we definitely have to um, get that sorted because that's what the symptoms are that's why the engine lights are on usually the brake pedal position sensor may or may not give you the engine light okay now the reason I said I already know the problem is because when I was driving is lacking power also I can feel uh, sorry I can hear that there's a lot of hissing noise like an air leaking noise from under the hood as I'm driving um, so that makes me believe there's a problem with the air leak on the intercooler area turbo area you know houses and the induction system that's what I believe that's why I said I know what the problem is and I've done it multiple times they're very common on Captiva but I'll just walk you through what type of fault codes you'll probably get for this one okay the typical ones I have on Captiva with the diesel is when you have a broken um, air leak problem right on the induction system you'll have an easier valve performance fault you could have mass airflow sensor performance fault you could also have uh, DPF blockage fault codes such as this one okay these are the typical fault codes I've seen um, uh, on on uh, captivas on a lot of GM vehicles um, but just because it says mass airflow sensor and easier valve and a DPF that's not the problem okay that's the that's something else cause that other faults to come on because the way the computer does is monitoring on this system and they think the mass airflow sensor is not performing well easier system is not performing well and also uh, if you have an air leak in the intake system that's definitely gonna um, going to block your DPF because the fuel ratio fuel and air ratio is not gonna be the correct for the engine right all right let's go to engine we'll just do a couple of checks here uh, I'll show you what checks you can do here um, 
definitely let's go and have a look what the DPF are doing. Uh, DPF diesel particulate filter maybe particulate filter no, nothing here maybe I have to go to the DPF data see if I can find that exhaust after uh, after treatment okay let's see what we got here suit centers DPF pressure sensor let's have a look that's all I'm really interested at this stage uh, let's just start the car up Star, car runs and starts fine okay you can drive it somewhat drivable okay now I'm not seeing anything on the DPF pressure yet just let's rev the car so so when I'm revving the car it's it's hitting about three four psi uh, sorry kPa which is not really a lot about 5 kPa maximum when I'm holding the red but if you drive in it you'll see a bit more than that obviously but the real concern is this 22% suit accumulation it, they usually should be around 0% in my belief so definitely has some kind of um, suit buildup um, but the pressure sensor is not showing us that that there is uh, some kind of uh, blockage uh, there um, and then let's go back to my engine data all I'm interested in is my induction system let's go and see our boost pressure that's what I'm that's what I'm uh, interested here boost pressure sensor all right that's all I'm interested in. I'm not worried about anything else just have a look there and you can tell here so I'm gonna rev the car now just watch that okay so So it's not when you slam on the accelerator I'm hitting about 4000 rpm and I'm not seeing anything more than 115 kPa of pressure build up okay let me put it in drive and try it now I'll just put the gear stick in drive let me try and the maximum I'm seeing 157 kPa let's try it again and hear that engine the air noise coming out of the engine I don't know if the camera picked up that I can hear a big a loud air hissing noise okay from under the under the hood so that's already suggestion there's an air leak in the boost uh, induction system okay now let me pause that quickly and hang on uh, let me pause that see how I'm not hitting anything more than 157 psi that's already tells you that there is an air leak or the turbo is not making enough pressure usually I've seen on modern diesel vehicle um, regardless what Toyota BT50 Ranger and Navara you know Captiva no matter what all diesel turbo vehicle that makes boost right I've seen when you're looking for intake pressure or the boost pressure on live data when you revving while just sitting while revving in neutral or sometimes you can put it in drive and just put your foot down hard like that on the accelerator I, I need to see close to 200 kPa okay that's good that means the the chances of having a leak is uh, is is, um, is very less okay they could have a small tiny leak which uh, you might not be able to pick up that way but if it's a large leak you can definitely see that on the scan tool this one's only hitting about 157 and uh, that's about uh, what uh, that's about uh, safe to say 20% down on boost pressure right so I already know there's gonna be a leak and I can already hear it so I don't need no uh, scan tool anymore uh, but with the fall codes what we can do is um, with the fall code what we can do is on mass airflow sensor fault code that will disappear that's that's because of the boost leaking also the dpf what we're gonna have to do is after we fix that leak we're gonna have to do a dpf burn and let the customer know uh, that it it's necessary to do it and then after you do that uh, take it for a drive obviously and make sure make sure the dpf suit percentage is doesn't climb up 
if I clear the DPF, do a burn right now, and if I take it for a drive, it won't even take 10 minutes on Captiva to build that suit up. But if you fix everything right, the suit will not build up uh, immediately like that, okay? Uh, that's another tip for you on a Captiva. All right, for this one, definitely um, changing the DPF or mass airflow sensor or, um, you know, doing a DPF burn, uh, regeneration you can do multiple regeneration that will never never fix this pro uh, fix this problem and I have said it many many times on many different uh, videos that I made um, that DPF usually mostly is not the reason why the engine light is on DPF is not the reason why the DPF is blocked it's something else external something else caused that um, DPF to uh, block okay so Changing the DPF, never gonna solve this problem. If you do that, this customer will be back the next day or two days later and then bite you again, okay? All right, uh, let me go under the hood. Like I said, I've done this multiple times, so I already know where the um, leak might be, okay? So I'm gonna go straight there. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll go straight there and I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for and hope I'm right. Okay, so we go this way. It's difficult to see. I'll try my best. It's difficult to see. All right, around this area on the intercooler hose, okay? Intercooler outlet, outlet hose. So basically the turbo is down here. Turbo is gonna send the um, pressure um, compressed air obviously to the intercooler at the front of the car right then at the bottom here underneath just on the left hand side uh, just under that bonnet uh, sorry under that bumper um, the intercooler hose comes out then it goes around and up and around the back that's where the throttle body is on this car right um, and if you need to buy that hose it's available from the dealer they usually are expensive part and it's usually, they usually take about an hour, maybe if you're good with tools, 45 minutes uh, to, to, to change that hose. You gotta buy the, when you buy the hose from the dealer, they will sell you the metal bit and the rubber bit, they all together and you gotta replace that from the bottom of this uh, area here on the intercooler outlet, uh, all the way there. You might be get away with just silicon hose if you can find the right size and everything, you know. Uh, that's where the problem is going to be okay now I'll try my best to show you like I said it, it's very difficult to see uh, and when you're changing the hose what you have to do is just uh, take the battery off take the battery tray off of, of course the computer out the way and then you'll have a you 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 have to take a couple of bolts from the fuse box here as well to get the battery tray out uh, and from there, it's a little bit of struggle, but you can get it done uh, from there. You sort of have to feed the pipe in a different, like, you know, a, a various different angle and you can get that pipe uh, changed from there. Now, I hope that's the problem. I'll quickly have a look here. And when you look at it from the top, you cannot see it's a very, very tight, tight spot. So let me grab a long screwdriver. So what you're gonna do is grab a long screwdriver like that, just a flat one, whatever you have, a long stick, whatever you can find in the workshop. And then, right here, that's where you are looking at, okay? Um, I've done this at least 50 times, guys, on Captiva, at least 50 different occasions. So there's a hose, a black hose at the bottom running down. Um, it's very difficult to see, guys. That's the hose. There's a clamp there at the very end. Um, you can see that silver bit at the end. So that's the hose, intercooler hose that goes around and feeds into that plastic bit at the back, right? So anyway, so have a look at it there and what you need to do is at the top you will not see anything broken okay that's the part so a lot of mechanic miss it if you already don't know 
if you haven't seen it. So what you have to do is you've got to feed the screwdriver down this way like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to go against the engine and the hose, right? And you're going to try to move that hose around. So you're trying to see the other side of the hose. That's what we're doing here, okay? So... Uh, like I said, it's super difficult, guys, to see. I'm trying to show you. And I hope I'm right. It could be somewhere else, the leak. I'm just assuming at the moment, just because it's a common issue. All right, so I'm going to use my screwdriver, and I'm going to turn that hose around. And then... You might be able to see what I'm talking about, hopefully. All right, right there, that's where the leak, leak is going to be. Um, and to be honest, I can already see it. There's a big, long crack right across that area there. Um, okay, right there, I'm trying to zoom in, all right, right there guys, that's where the split is, there's a long split on that hose, it's sort of facing the engine, so it's not at the top of the hose, so you can't really see it without taking it off, but using a long screwdriver, you sort of I'm trying to do both things at the same time. You're trying to sort of move in and out the hose. And you can see that crack. I hope that makes sense for you guys. All right, that's your crack right at the bottom there. It's hard to see. So hof hopefully that makes sense, guys. That's where your crack is. That's, um, so Captiva, very common problem. Uh, just change that hose, do a DPF burn, and you'll fix that engine light and everything, guys. I hope you enjoy that. Um, now, I have had this many, many times where, cost, uh, where mechanics are told, change the DPF, you know. Um, please don't do that. I mean, I got a website, guys. Go check it out if you want to learn about mechanics diagnosis you know mechanical and electrical problems go check it out um, it's fifty dollars a month i mean it's nothing when you think about it if you know how to diagnose this stuff you'll make more money uh, way more money and you'll save time so uh, saying that i'll uh, catch you guys next time